I wish we could have a seminar where we could have all of the clothes lying out and you could see inside the seams and how pieces were made and how, how intricate it was. As the 1800s went on, there were so many fashion shops for doll costumes in Paris and then eventually the ateliers within the actual Jumeau factory. There was so much concentration on this. It was such a serious business to make these doll costumes and to make them authentic and able to be importantly put on and taken off the doll because remember in the early 1800s costumes were literally sewn onto the dolls. They weren't designed to be taken off. You could just hold the doll that way. As the concept of play came along more and more it was desired and also a concept of um, frankly business because the more you could dress and undress a doll the more mom was coming to the store to buy more clothes for the doll, more accessories, uh, more playthings, and this really began with the Hooray era, and they perfected it and then continued right on through the end of the century. So I have some other beautiful costumes. If you, One of the things I want you to notice, I know I'm just kind of going over a lot of things fast, but one of the things to notice is how certain colors uh, reoccur over and over again. Um, the ice blues, the mauve I mentioned, the pale rose, the aqua green, a coral color. These were really important to um, enhance the beauty of the doll and they were very stylish and every year new colors and new styles would come out but certain patterns or styles or colors remained constant in the doll world and this is what is to be sought. Here's a beautiful uh, dress for probably would have been on an early brew or an early jumeau, a uh, black velvet with the coral trim and the wonderful uh, Belgian lace trim on it, including the ruffled babalures. So very, very nice. I want to turn this around so you can see the back of it as well. You can see it's like a jacket dress and it has the silk edged lappets. And then we paired this with a black velvet bonnet that has the silk flower and silk fringe. Now going to the opposite extent, Mignonettes were coming along, tiny dolls, in the early 1880s. And look at these wonderful little silk dresses that were made for little mignonettes. This one with the fitted dropped waist, and again, the very pale, pale rose color, a pleated lower skirt, and the teal blue sash around it, um, lacing around the neckline. And I'm going to turn it so you can see the back side. And look how intricately that sash is draped and folded at the back of this dress. And then moving along and staying with that same teal green color, this is a silk and it is a stunner. Look at it. A jacket style dress, not really a jacket, just made to look like it was a jacket over a dress, but it is a one piece dress with a drop waist with jacket um, lapels at the side and with the center uh, panel called a plastron, a very, very uh, heavily draped and ruched same silk fabric little coat sleeves, turned up cuffs, and let's turn it around. And you can see the design at the back. The jacket design continues, the wide midi type collar, very, very beautiful. Along the same line, we have another in a slightly paler color in the very pale green, very beautifully um, designed dress because it has this draped front with the lace over the uh, yoke and then the ivory satin ribbons that are extending down the front. And let's just turn it around and show the back. You know, some of these dresses to me are so complicated, it's difficult to tell which is the front or the back. And sometimes we'll have like 15 minute discussions here with three or four of us on, well, which is the front or the back? So if you ever are puzzled that way yourself, you're not alone. The style of the sleeve is very, very nice, done with the, um, with the sewn down pleats, giving fullness to them as well. I love this dress. This is a beautiful um, rose silk dress, and it has the matching bonnet. Let me just turn that around so it has the fitted bodice, and then cartridge pleating at the waist. And it has bands of ribbon overlaying it. So it's not just like a lace overlay, but it actually like oh, one inch bands of ribbon that extend around the entire skirt. 
and this beautiful lace overlay at the top and then look at the matching bonnet. This is how the doll would have been sold by uh, the doll maker or by the store. Very, very similar to um, Oh Non Bleu in Paris, created a lot of costumes in this particular style and this quite likely could have been one of their costumes. This again, a little bit earlier dress and you are looking at the back of it here. Let me show you the front of this. I always call it a cashmere wool. I'm not sure, like a flannel wool or a cashmere. Very, very fine, very delicate, thin wool in this apple green color. And it has all of the feather stitching and floral embroidery on it, plus the little um, white edging and the wide sash. And then let me turn it this way. You can see the whole thing all the way around. And it has with it a matching green velour bonnet with um, ribbons. And while we're talking about those bonnets, I wanted to show you something else because I am a very big favorite of, I love what are called the Borelay bonnets. And this is an example of a Borelay bonnet. These were designed originally for young children that were just learning to walk. And you would put it on the crown of their head. So when they fell over, it protected their head from, their, the weak crown of their head from, from crushing. Um, they also had a function, but they also had beauty. And I know there are collectors that just collect the Borelay caps. And I have an example of two of the very famous ones, or fancy ones here. This one is hardly almost falls into the category of being a Borelay because it's so fancily woven with layer upon over, overlapping layers of scalloped edge weave. And then that's repeated around the sides with a scalloped edging. And then it's decorated with tulle and draped ice blue silk ribbons. Very, very beautiful. And I want you to see the inside because very often people never get to see the inside of some of these early bonnets. And then here was a small, the smaller one. I love this one because when you say the word velour today, it doesn't have a really, I don't know, it, to me it doesn't imply something very luxurious. But velour in 1880 was a very rich fabric. And this is a beautiful, oh, it's so soft. These little, uh, little velour tassels hanging down and then interwoven into the Borele cap are wonderful. And if you want to see inside, you can see that the cap also is lined, very simply, but lined. Just a few other bonnets to show you here, because once again, you need to see the outside of a bonnet. Talk about a frame for a doll's head. That's a frame. And the inside of the bonnet. Look at the, how, many layer, how many different levels of weaving are there. These were not s simplistic pieces. And look at this one. Okay, here is the outside. And please note that velvet ribbon, the striped velvet ribbon, a very luxurious fabric in itself with silk flowers. And now wait, I'm going to turn around, you won't believe it. Okay, the entire inside of the bonnet is lined with that same velvet silk ribbon. So 40 years ago, I, we were at, my husband and I were at a woman's house and she was having us, we were just beginning and she was having us sell some dolls for her. And we were starting to pack them up and she said, well, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. And I said, what? She said, I need that bonnet on that doll. And I said, well, why? And she said, oh, I've had that bonnet on 10 different dolls I've had, and every time I put that bonnet on a doll, it just makes the doll. I can't let it go. I will tell you, I've never forgotten that story, and I've seen this happen over and over again. A doll, you could have a bad hair day on a doll. You could just simply have a costume that you say it's not quite finished, and you put the right bonnet on, and wow, that doll is made. And then one, I just thought this was a really pretty design because of the way it has the very high top slightly slanted, and then the brim, which is turned up in the very luxurious brown silk ribbon and feather trim. And one other dress on here to show you, which also has a bonnet, by the way. So this wonderful dress, I don't know if how clearly you can see it on the yoke, but there is like an aqua silk underlay on the yoke, and over it is this very, very deeply or densely woven um, 
piece of fabric that then has cut work and embroidery on that. Very beautifully done. Now, that aqua silk yoke is repeated right here on the sash at the back of the doll's dress and at the piping that runs around the waist. And the same design on the yoke is repeated on the cuffs. And to continue, feather stitching all the way down the sleeve sides and on the hem and with elaborate um, gathering at the waist. To top it off, this hat does have something to top it off. And it's a brown woven bonnet with tulle and silk and lace trim. And then I wanted to show you this wonderful one. You can, I, as far as I'm concerned, you can never have too many dolls wearing sailor dresses. But this is a modification of a sailor dress because it has the themes of the striping around the sides, around the skirt. The cape is attached, and at first you think that it is made this way with just a cape overlay, but watch. There's a complete dress underneath with the fitted yoke, the coat sleeves, and then the attached cape. Very, very beautiful dress. Let me show you the back side of it. Inverted box pleats all the way around. Again, one of my very favorite costumes in the entire collection is this gorgeous ivory satin um, ensemble with its matching bonnet. Now, I think this probably was a child's dress originally, um, but it would, how stunning would this be on like a 34 inch doll? She had, this dress has, let me just show it to you. It has this wonderful um, tool, pleated tool at the bottom with white silk roses all around the edging. It has even a matching attached fan Great paper fan. This costume has never been worn by a child. It has the puff sleeves, the lantern sleeves. It has more um, silk roses, and I'm just going to turn it around so you can see how beautiful. Look at this wonderful silk ribbon, which we're going to see repeated here in the bonnet and in the, around the bodice. And at the back, you can see this wonderful free falling once again with the actual folded drapes at the top. Beautifully constructed, exquisitely made, fabulous original condition, and with its original bonnet with the white silk roses and the scrunched um, tulle all the way around. Very, very outstanding, outstanding piece. Again, to save as a, just a piece of costuming in itself or to costume one of your larger dolls. Now, I do have a few other pieces I want to show you. And before I do, I want to remind you, this catalog has 350 lots, of which many lots have multiple pieces, including undergarments, shoes. There are hundreds of doll shoes, which I know everyone is looking for. Fabulous bonnets, costume dresses, accessories, jewelry, parasols, all of the wonderful things you can imagine. I, when I started to show you, I realized I can't begin to show you everything. You need to come to this auction. You need to see these pieces in real life. If you can't come, please be planning to be watching live on Proxy Bid that day and you'll be able to at least see many more of the pieces than you're seeing here. Okay, just to finish now, this is a wonderful dress which has an ensemble really, which features this wonderful knitted dress. Beautiful. Turn it around, you can see it that way. The band's going down silk ribbon going through, the loop um, hold, holders for the buttons. It has the matching coat with a wonderful collar and cuffs, which is designed to drape over it. And it has the matching muff. And it has this wonderful matching cap, which is designed to fit this way over the doll's head so it would form a little crown right across the top of the head and would form a warming um, piece coming down the back with a little blue ribbon at the crown, almost in a way like a, just a wonderful wig. It's just, I, I think this is a stunning ensemble. Now, let me show you right here. This is a beautiful, again, fabrics were so important and 
when you can find a dress in this wonderful fabric that has just stood the test of time, this is great. This is a very, very beautiful uh, doll's dress of a ribbed rose and cream, uh, tiniest, tiniest stripes dress with the uh, broderie anglaise yoke, silk ribbons, turning it around the back. You can see the fitting is nice with the ribbons at the back. It's a beautiful piece. Cartridge pleating, very, very narrow cartridge pleating, extending out into the fullness of the skirt. This is an incredible ensemble. Three-piece ensemble. We have the dress itself of the silk file, file which is the ribbed, um, horizontal ribbed design. Very, very firm and strong. It has a fitted yoke with three overlapping folds. It has the ruffled lace uh, Bertha collar. Very beautiful. Very full sleeves with the wide cuffs. Let me turn it around so you can see the back. It has this wonderful bonnet, wide brimmed bonnet with row upon row of intricately woven straw. Flat top with this coral silk bows. And interior linen lining. And finally, to complete the ensemble, this fabulous wooden handled uh, parasol with the topaz, faux topaz hand grip and rose silk cover with double tiered lace gathering ruffles. And then finally, because I think some of the sweetest dolls are dressed in very simple cotton dresses. I want, there's a big assortment of wonderful dresses like that. And two of my favorites are this darling little um, chambray blue uh, dress with the embroidery around the bottom, around the collar, edging the bottom of the self-tie sash, and at the cuffs. Darling little size dress. And this wonderful pinafore dress with, check out that border. And we're right back to the bicycle built for two days. And I think that if someone buys the Whistling Jumeau, Whistling Bicycle Built for Two, they should also buy this costume and costume a beautiful Jumeau in this because it's a boy and a girl on a bicycle built for two. I hope to see you all on March 11 and 12 in Naples. If I don't see you there in person, I hope you'll be able to watch the auction live. Um, and if you are interested in purchasing the catalogs to have a memory of all of these beautiful pieces, they are available. I would love to meet any of you personally, and I enjoy talking to you, and that is all I have for you today. Thanks very much. Bye.